food systems, which are the way we produce food and we bring it to people's tables, are an excellent entry point for climate action. We don't want for it to be years of debate before resources to address these issues are in the hands of people who need them most. Once our trucks are rolling and our airdrops are coming to distribute food, it is already too late. Distributing food is not the answer. Then we are already confronted with a failure to predict and a failure to protect. Have you ever asked yourself, how does climate change actually affect me? Look no further than your plate. In today's global food crisis, you may have noticed certain foods are less available or missing from the shelves entirely. This reduction in food supplies, as well as increased costs, could rise in the future. As climate impacts kill crops and livestock, degrade soils, deplete fisheries, damage infrastructure and agricultural assets, and cut off transport links to markets. For some, it's not a matter of making a different food choice at the supermarket. Instead, it can mean missing a meal entirely, day after day after day. Finding our way out of the climate crisis is the challenge of our time. We know how to fix it. We know why it matters. We believe everyone deserves to feel secure in having a full plate to eat, day after day after day. Every inhabited region of the world is experiencing the effects of the climate crisis, but not everyone is experiencing it in the same way. Vulnerable countries and communities are already suffering. These are often communities who contribute the least to the climate crisis and now bear the brunt of impacts with limited ways to adapt. This is climate injustice. Those that are mostly impacted by climate change are those living in countries like Madagascar, for instance, with already low production capacity less industrial emissions, but where communities have also poor access to services and to materials and still are at the front line of the crisis. These are victims of heat waves or invasion of locusts, for instance, and those cascading consequences of climate change are resulting in loss of human life sometimes, agriculture production, also animal production, and at the end to the economy of, of those countries as well. Emissions reductions to mitigate the climate crisis are crucial, but we can't wait for this. We must enable communities on the front lines to adapt to the worsening impacts of the crisis. And at the World Food Programme, we do. Anticipatory action is one way of supporting people before shocks occur. Funding and implementing preventative measures before a disaster occurs has proven to be life-changing. One of the most promising innovations we've seen is anticipatory action. With the technological advances and the reliability of weather forecasts nowadays, we know with really reliable uh, frequency when a shock is going to hit and who are the people who are going to be most likely affected and how is this going to hurt their livelihoods, what kind of losses might they incur. So with this information and with this reliable forecast, we're often able to pre-identify resources and agree upon how they would be used should the shock hit as is forecasted. When individuals have the opportunity to manage anticipatory action in their local community, change is possible. But it also depends on governments willing to play a key role, changing policies and processes, and committing to investing in climate solutions. Because addressing climate change means making system change. It's 
smallholder farmers across the world are highly vulnerable to climate-related risks, such as droughts or floods and storms. With very limited access to the risk financing tools and services that can provide protection from resulting financial losses. This locks many farmers into a vicious cycle of poverty and food insecurity as recovery from increasingly recurrent and cascading losses becomes close to impossible. WFP works with communities and governments to use a range of tools to protect communities from the impacts of these shocks. Some of these might be instruments such as microinsurance that WFP aggregates and pays the premium for on behalf of farmers. It might be anticipatory action that will allow WFP and others to respond much faster in a much more targeted way. Right now, the activities required to produce, process, and transport food to our tables are neither equitable nor sustainable. The strength of our food systems is further tested in the face of climate impacts. Protection against such risks can help in the short and long term. WFP's Food Assistance for Assets initiative addresses immediate food needs through cash, vouchers, or food transfers, while at the same time it promotes the building or rehabilitation of assets that will improve long-term food security and resilience. These activities aim to create healthier natural environments, reduce the risks and impact of climate and other shocks, increase food productivity, and strengthen resilience to disasters over time. The climate might be changing but so are we. We've seen how implementing solutions to anticipate, restore, protect, and energize can support affected communities. Every step taken against climate injustice brings us closer to our pursuit of a world free from hunger. Is it still possible to fight the climate crisis? Yes, it is possible. We know what we have to do to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the way we live and work. We know how to adapt to the impacts of the climate crisis and to manage climate risk, but we need the institutional incentives, the processes, the political will to do this globally and at scale. As a global community, we are only as safe as our most vulnerable members. If we manage to de-risk food systems and protect the most vulnerable, then we will be able to stem the tide of global hunger.